Okay, so if you're learning algebra, you're definitely going to have to take a lot of quizzes and tests, chapter tests, midterms, final exams. This is part of the nature of being a student in any topic. But again, in algebra, you're going to be facing a lot of tests. And what I have here is four algebra problems, kind of like at the first year um, algebra level. Not overly difficult, but I'm going to go ahead and do these uh, problems in real time. And I'll be done with these problems in eight minutes or less. And the whole point of this video is to kind of demonstrate, you know, to actually see me work these problems out in real time. And really what uh, the kind of big point I want to communicate here is pacing yourself on quizzes and tests and homework, all right? Kind of need to be aware of how much time you are spending on any one particular problem. And that's really, really critical, again, if you have to take exams. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and uh, do some uh, random problems, four random problems. I'm gonna show you the problems here in a second. And of course, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to pause the video. You could do these problems. A lot of you can do these problems in less than eight minutes. So I think I'll uh, probably won't even go beyond eight minutes, but um, that's a pretty decent pacing for these problems. And we're going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It is my passion to teach mathematics. And uh, I can tell you right now, all those years of teaching math, I've come to one conclusion, and that is this. All students can be successful in mathematics. Now, some of those students are going to be you know, mathematics uh, genius. They're, they're going to like, you know, go on and do great things because they love math. But there's a lot of students out there that, uh, you know, tend to struggle math. You know, maybe that's you. Maybe you're failing the math. But you out there that are struggling in math, particularly, I'm telling you right now, you can do well in math, but you need like basically two or three things. One, you got to have the desire to want to do well, right? That's the first thing. The second thing you need is encouragement. You need someone kind of like, you know, uh, encouraging you to actually learn this stuff. And the third thing and the most important thing you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying from, uh, studying for some sort of special test, that has math on it. I'm talking about things like the SAT, ACT, GED, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam. Or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses uh, that cover all these areas and much, much more. I promise it will help you out big time. I'm also gonna leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. Um, it's critical that you take great notes. If you're not note-taking right now in your math class, you absolutely need to start. So in the meantime, you can use my notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these problems. And you can uh, pause the video, take out a piece of scrap paper, and do these problems. I bet you a lot of you out there could do these problems probably like in one minute, okay? Like if I really wanted to kind of show off, which I'm not a show off here, I could do these problems, one, two, three, da, 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 but I'm gonna kind of take this nice and slow here. But let's take a look at these four problems. So the first is we have two X and we wanna multiply by three X minus one, all right? So that is our first problem. Our second problem is Y equals one half X plus four. So what I want you to do is to sketch a quick graph if you want to do this problem. Our third problem is 5x squared minus 1 is equal to 19. I want you to solve for x there. And our last problem here is f of x. We have a function. f of x is equal to x cubed minus x. I'd like you to find f of negative 1. Okay, so if you think you could do a couple of these problems, all right, maybe pause the video and do what you can do. But I'm going to get into these things right now, and I'm just going to do the problems. It can you know, basically do some light explaining, but um, kind of uh, kind of demonstrate how to do algebra problems in real time. And by the way, if these were like actual quiz or test problems, kind of some of the work that you should be showing, because one of the, uh, one of the problems that a lot of you out there have is that you know how to do, like you understand the topics, but you're not showing your work you know, step by step. You need to really be neat and organized and show things step by step. That's how your teacher wants to see things. That's how you're, hopefully you're being taught math. And that's how your teacher kind of wants to see you do your math as well. But let's go ahead and get into this right now. And we're going to start with our first problem. 
Okay, so 2x times 3x minus 1. How do we do this problem? Well, this is an illustration of the distributive property, okay? Basically, I'm um, seeing if you understand the distributive property, it's super easy. All we're going to do is take this 2x, we're going to multiply it by 3x. I'm going to take this 2x, I'm going to multiply it by 1. So if I really want to be fancy about it, um, I can go like this. 2x times 3x minus 2x times that one right there. Okay, so 2x times 3x is 6x squared minus 2x to, uh, times 1, of course, is 2x. And this is the answer. Okay, so if you got this right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face if you are participating. Very, very good. We'll hold off on any final grades here until we get through all uh, the problems. But let's move on to our second problem. Now, notice here that this took me all of about maybe 45 seconds. I'm, I'm explaining it. Literally, you can just do this one, two, three. And I understand a lot of you out there are like, oh my gosh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I can do this in 45 seconds. I know a lot of you can. I know you, a lot of you can do this well. But what I'm trying to say is, Pace yourself with problems. Stop and think because those of you who are kind of like superstars in math, guess what? Sometimes you're your own worst enemy. You go too fast and then you make mistakes. One phrase that I've probably um, heard maybe a hundred million times in my, maybe not that much, but you kind of get the idea, is the following phrase. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that, Mr. Math teacher. I knew that. I know the answer. I just made a mistake. Listen, you made a mistake because you're going too fast. Slow yourself down, right? You got to have a discipline to your pacing. All right, let's go on to our second problem here. Okay, so y is equal to one half x plus four. Let's go ahead and construct a quick graph. Now, notice here I don't have any graph paper. You don't have any. Uh, you don't have to have graph paper or even a pre kind of written x y plane. All you need to do is be nice and neat and kind of keep a uh, basic scale in mind. So let me go ahead and graph this right now. So I'm gonna start off first by just kind of sketching out, you see I'm freehanding this, um, little x, y plane like so. So anytime you're sketching stuff, you wanna be nice and neat. Now, if you have a ruler, you can take the time to do this, but uh, it's really important when you're sketching out, especially like an x, y plane, try to really make sure that you, um, uh, make your little uh, plane here, your axis is you try to form a right angle. Okay, this is supposed to be 90 degrees. In other words, you don't want to go like this. Okay, there's X, there's Y. You don't want to be sloppy. Really be nice and neat and slow. And the only way you're going to get better at this is by practicing. Okay, so now, now that I have a nice little sketch here, what I want to do is go ahead and graph this. So how do I graph uh, this line? Well, this line is in y equals mx plus b form. So you're going to start with the y-intercept, which is this number right here. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice I'm just putting little uh, marks here. I'm going to create my scale. This is 4. Okay. Now I'll put in some final coordinates here in a second. But this is one point that's on this line. Now I'm going to have to use this point which is m, this is the slope to get to my second point. The slope here is kind of like driving directions from this point. So from this point, you're saying, hey, I, I need some driving directions uh, to get to my second point. So, you know, you're like, hey, go down the street and make a right-hand uh, turn. That's kind of the one way I like to kind of think of the slope. It's telling us how to get to our second point from our first point when we're, we're dealing with what we call the slope-intercept form. So one-half... This is the rise and this is the run, okay? The rise is how much a line goes uh, up or down and the run is always to the right. So the, uh, typically from your point here, your slope is gonna go either up and to the right or this is for when the slope is positive, like in our case, we have a positive one half. If it's negative, it's gonna go down and to the right. All right, now again, I'm not going to turn this whole video into a whole lesson on slope. That would be much longer than the time I have. I'm just, you know, giving you some in, uh, food for thought here just in case you're confused. Okay, so one half, right? Uh, so I'm going to go up one and to the right two from four. So I'm going to go up one and then over two, one, two, something like right here. Now notice this is two on my scale. So I kind of want to you know, be as neat as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and just freehand my nice little line through there. And then let's go ahead and label it y equals one half x plus four. 
And it's a good idea to show these coordinates as well. So this coordinate there would be what? 0, 4. And this coordinate would be what? Well, on the x-axis, I went over 2, right? And I went up 1, so this would be um, 2 on x. And I went up 1 from 4, so that's 5, okay? So this would be kind of an adequate, more than adequate uh, kind of sketch that uh, your teacher would love, all right? So if you got this right, something comparable to this, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and two check marks, okay? You're definitely on the right path. Uh, to, you know, uh, doing these problems. But again, uh, notice, I mean, I'm explaining this stuff, but when you're doing any math problems, respect the problem. Don't go super fast so you don't have to, you know, go back to your math teacher and ask for partial credit because you're going to say, I knew that, I knew that. I gave you the wrong answer, but I knew the right answer. I just gave you the wrong answer because I was going too fast. Listen, I'm trying to give you the secrets to do very well in mathematics. It's really kind of a game that you have to play. Um, and if you listen to my advice, believe me, you're going to do so much better at, uh, you know, in terms of at least your grades and overall mathematics for that um, point as well. So let's go ahead and tackle this problem right now. So we have 5x squared minus 1 is equal to 19. Solve for x. Now, if you want to go ahead and do this, if you haven't had a chance to do this, pause the video. So my question to you is how many solutions uh, do we have for this equation? Okay, is it x equals some number? Well, no, in fact, we have two uh, solutions. This is what we call a quadratic equation, right? So that's kind of really what I'm testing uh, here is do you understand quadratic equations? You know, like this is a super easy problem. Let's go ahead and solve it right now. So we have 5x squared minus 1 is equal to 19. What you want to show is the steps. Uh, to solve this problem. Okay, if you're doing this on a test or quiz, you want to go like this, add 1 to both sides of the equation. We get 5x squared is equal to 20. Now I want to go ahead and solve for x squared, so I, I can go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 5. Now, really what I just showed you right there is, um, uh, wasn't good. Okay, so I, you know, I, I made a boo-boo. Okay, so what I want to do is show the result of this step. So it's a good habit, and I know it's like seems like extra work to just rewrite this step again. Okay, remember we're telling a story. If what I did was put two steps in one, okay? Now, a lot of students do things like that, and I understand what they're doing, and I don't really, you know, I'll give them a little bit of feedback, say, hey, listen, you know, you need to try to, you know, break this down, but what ends up happening, myself included, is we get a little bit lazy. We're like, ah, I just want to do more more steps in one, but it kind of it it uh, confuses um, kind of the flow of the steps. All right, so rewrite the problem again, and now show this next step, which is what divide both sides of the equation by five. So now I have x squared is equal to uh, four. Okay, so this is the way you want to do this problem. So x squared is equal to 4. So now write it again. x squared is equal to 4. How do I solve for x? Now you take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to both positive and negative, uh, positive and negative 2. All right, these are our two solutions. x1 is 2. x2, our second solution, is negative 2. Of course, we can just write that as x is equal to positive and negative 2, not just 2. Okay, this is a quadratic equation. And I'm not going to uh, talk about or explain, overly explain quadratic um, equations, but this is the work you need to, um, you know, uh, show, right? This is, a, you know, your teacher's going to look through this and be like, okay, they know how to do that. Uh, they know how to do this. Look at this. Why they're so good. Boy, they are doing great. Maybe they're watching that guy on YouTube. I don't know. They're just doing amazing. But anyways, if you got this problem right, and more importantly, if you show all this work, more or less, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly like mine, but generally, you know, you kind of showed these steps, then I got to give you a nice little happy face and three check marks because you're doing great. And now let's move on to our last problem here. Okay, so we're dealing with a function. All right, now again, a huge topic. I'm not going to teach about functions, but what does this mean right here? F of negative one. Well, it means plug in a negative one into this function. And this x right here, we're going to replace with negative 1. So all these x's, we're going to plug in a negative 1, and we're going to simplify the function. So let's go ahead and see that work right now. So we're going to write the function. f of x is equal to x cubed minus x. And then we're going to evaluate this function for negative 1. So our work would be like this. f of negative 1, we're going to set it up and always use parentheses when you're plugging in a value into a function. 
Okay, very, very important, especially uh, when you have like a subtraction operator in front of a variable like this. If you don't use parentheses, you can get yourself in a lot of mistakes. So um, all these topics, by the way, if you need additional help on this, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel and I teach all this in my various uh, math courses. A lot of this, again, what I'm focusing on here is kind of like algebra one level. All right, so this is what you want to do. You want to show first the setup. Now, before you go any further, you want to make sure that you set the problem up correctly. Okay, f of negative one, here's x, there's negative one, cubed, okay, da, 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 everything looks good. So now you want to go ahead and continue on with the problem. And for me, you don't have to keep writing f of negative one right here. You can just put little equal signs. And now we have to just go ahead and take this thing one at a time. Negative one cubed, what does that mean? Well, if you don't have your calculator, okay, you hopefully you don't need a calculator, go off to the side on your scrap paper, like over here, right, off to the side of your, your work. Don't do it right here and double check yourself so you're not confused. This is what I'm talking about, going nice and slow is, okay, let me just check negative one times negative one times negative one. This is a negative negative, that's positive times negative. So this would be a negative one, all right? So if you're not sure, always double, double check yourself. And then here, we have a negative of a negative. What's a negative of a negative? This is a positive. So negative one plus positive one, that is equal to zero. We can either put a zero like that, or you can just put a zero. So f of negative one is equal to zero. That is the answer. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got all these right and you showed all the work, okay, pretty much more or less the way I did it, well, I got to give you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and we'll kick in a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Now, I spent a lot of time kind of explaining things, all right? Of course, I could have done all these problems in, you know, under one minute with all the work. Uh, because, I, you know, this is what I've been doing for decades and decades. You know, you do something long enough, you're going to get good at it. But here's the deal. You don't, it's not a race, or is what I'm kind of getting at. Is like, you know, when you're doing mathematics, don't have this mindset. I'm especially speaking to those of you that tend to like math and you get excited about doing math, right? Typically, the strong math students are... Uh, you know, they oftentimes don't get the best grades on test. The super, super, like the, those students are just love math because they're so excited. They go too fast. They turn on a test early and then they got errors. And then they come back and they say, I knew that. I knew that. Please, please give me more uh, points on my test. So you have to pace yourself, right? Uh, on uh, not only, you know, homework prompts, okay? You have to, you know, you don't want to spend three hours doing a homework problem. If you can't do a problem, skip that problem, move forward, and then ask questions on it. But this is really, really important on tests and quizzes. And uh, the more you practice it, the better you're going to be. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.